What's up guys, it's Zizi here, welcome back. Today I'm bringing you the profile of the deck that I took to the European WCQ and got top 128 with. I decided to play Predoplans, I felt like this was a pretty good meta call because I didn't want to play so many mirror matches whether I was either playing Tier Laments or Sprite, I didn't really have enough time to test in order to be able to get good enough to prevail in mirror matches because that's what matters more when you're playing in mirror matches so I thought that the best choice I had was basically to counter them and Predoplans having Preda counters to basically put the sprite monsters to level 1 so they won't be able to go for the rank 2 XCs and searchable super poly against tier elements is really really nice so I felt like it was pretty good medical and it did really really well. During the 12th round of Swiss I faced one Exosister and the rest were sprite and tier elements so pretty much everything I expected to play. I ended up 8-3-1, I lost to two tier elements, one sprite and I drew with one sprite so overall I ended up 109th after Swiss enough to get to the top 128 and at the top cut in the first round I played against Wanderies. There is a feature match if you want to get, if you want to see me get destroyed by that deck because yes this is one matchup that I know it's really really bad the chances of you winning it especially if they open shifter are very low so yeah i was not prepared for that matchup but i guess i'm glad that i didn't see it up until the top cut so yeah if you want to check out that feature match you can go and check konami's uh, page and youtube so you can see the matchup it's top 128 match so yeah i'm just going to get into the profile now and before i begin i want to say this right now because i know there will be a lot of people in the comments asking this the reason i did not play heroes in the wcq is because heroes in this particular format are not that great because dark Dark Angel was the main win condition last format and now Dark Angel is terrible against tier elements and sprite. Against sprite all they need is any level 2 monster and they can turn it into a sprite elf and against tier elements you're basically giving them a free material for curious and without Dark Angel you lose to stuff like Dark Ruler No More and Super Poly which were both cards that were being main decked by a lot of people in the event. So yeah this is why heroes I felt like they were not a really good choice for this event. Against Flanderies yes they would have been better than Predaplants but against everything else that I faced they would have been a lot lot worse so I still think that this is the best deck I could have played for this event depending on how much time I had to be able to test anything else. So before we begin with the video, if you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss upcoming content and now let's get to the deck profile. So let's start with the main deck. We have three copies of Petaplan Orphe Scorpio. This is a card everyone knows and this is something that I use to my advantage because a lot of people know this card for the engine being played with Cobra for searching a poly card and then going to a rank 3. And this confuses a lot of people because they were not prepared to see this deck. Especially especially at an event of this caliber so there were being a lot of hand drops being wasted in this card and that's actually the wrong move to do against this deck because Scorpio is not the only way anymore to summon Cobra from the deck. There is a fusion monster in the one of Ambulolilis which is level 5 which can summon Cobra from the deck as well so when they waste the hand drop on Scorpio that basically means that I will be able to resolve Cobra most likely when I fuse and I get it from the deck with another way so this is why Scorpio is a really good card being able to not only get to your plays but also bait a lot of hand drops a lot of the times. We have the one copy of Cobra. This is still the card you don't want to see ever. I drew it in the second game against Flanderies in the feature match and because of that I made a very subpar board. You can still make something if you draw this card, if you have the right cards in your hand, but when you don't draw this card and you have it access in your deck then you can make a lot more better stuff because being able to set up Drogostapelia, Mirror Jade, Branded Banishment and also Preda Planning against the meta decks it's basically almost enough to win because the thing about this deck is that it does not lose to Dark Ruler no more or Lightning Stone because it has both monsters and back row that can deal damage to your opponent. So it's not like Sprite where if you get Dark Ruler you're basically relying on having hand drops in your hand in order to have a play or maybe a Smasher's face down. But yeah, this card does have a lot of monsters and a lot of back row that can disrupt your opponent, which is why it's very difficult to counter if you don't hand drop it during the turn one at the correct moment. We play three copies of Biblis. This card is basically the free discard of the deck. You want to discard this with Scorpio, you want to discard this with Branded Opening, you want to send this to the grave with Preda Planning. This is a card that is going to give you a search of any Preda Plan monster when it goes to the graveyard. The second effect to be summoned from the grave if there is a Preda counter on the field never came up and I don't feel like in a deck like this it's going to come up often. If you play more of a pure Preda Plan deck then maybe it can come up if you play both the scales so you can put Preda counters on your opponent's monsters but in this particular version I'm not maxing out on a lot of the Preda Plan monsters because I want to make room for more other cards that were going to help me win games so this is why this effect is not going to come up but you mainly need it for the effect to search and since it's a free discard you have a lot of ways to get that search also with branded ban with brand banishment and also all the other cards with brand fusion you can send to the grave with brand fusion to summon lubelion and then you can use mirror jade's effect on your turn and then fuse your mirror jade for dragostapelia and because you send an albion you can basically get a banishment so this card being able to give you a fusion a search for the pendulum monster that fuses means that you will be able to always get 
access to Brutal Banishment turn one. We play two copies of Climbing the Sanju. This is the one that fuses including itself from hand or field. It's a really good card that if you have this with another Brelevan in your hand, then you can basically full combo because you summon Ambulody this, and then you basically get to your full combo because this card, not only is it going to search you your Preda Planning, but it's also going to get you access to your cover from the deck, which will search your branded Banishment, and then you basically do the standard stuff. And the last Preda Blood Monster is a one copy of Bufalicola. This is the Pendulum Scale that fuses. You are going to search this sometimes with a fusion monster if you don't have another way to get access to Dracostapelia because searching Preda Planning, if you don't have a Dracostapelia on the field, doesn't do anything because you need those counters to not only be able to get your opponent's monsters to level 1, but also negate your opponent's monster effects when you have Dracostapelia on the board. So yeah, this card is a really good card. Most of the time you're going to be searching with Biblis, but there will be some scenarios where you will have to fuse it to search with a fusion monster. We play two copies of Fallen of Albas. You don't need to max out Albas in this deck. It's just that it's not a Despia deck. It's not a deck that you want to grind a lot, always keep your resources in your deck by shuffling Albas every single time. This deck is much more explosive than Branded Despia. It seals games way, way faster, so playing two Albas is perfect fine. We play one copy of Alubur. The only reason we play only one is because the deck already has really good normal summons in the forms of Plamida Sanju and Orphis Scorpio. And even though you can special summon them sometimes for the practice, you're going to have to normal summon them a lot of the times. So playing more copies of Alubur would mean that it would break you with a lot of normal summons in the hand. We played just one because we played Branded Opening. This card is really good not to play. Not only it gives you access to Brand Infusion, but it protects your monsters from destructions. We play one copy of Fairy Tale Snow because Snow is such a good card. It seems that Konami made a mistake by bringing this card back. I'm pretty sure everyone saw it a lot in the tournament decks, and in this deck it's no exception. You can send this to the grave with Brand Infusion to summon Albion and basically get a free interrupt. For the hand traps, play three copies of Ash Blossom. Yes, I am playing hand traps. I was considering not playing at all, but I felt like against certain matchups, they were going to abuse the fact that people were not playing hand traps and they were going to go for the full combo decks. Like when you're playing tier laments and when you're playing against tier laments, you expect that your opponent doesn't have hand traps in the main deck at least, so you just spam everything you have. So hand traps can catch people off by surprise, and being able to stop Gigantic Sprite can sometimes be enough to give you the edge you need for the following turn to be able to fight back. And I am playing two copies of Valor. The reason I'm playing Valor is because I wanted an extra light target in the deck for Albion in case I want to summon during the late game, but also I wanted some more disruption when I was going second because I felt like the deck against a lot of matchups when you don't have Dark Ruler in your hand, then you can struggle a lot because it always depends on how good the opponents are, especially when you're playing Sprite, on whether they will play around Super Poly or not because if they summon something like a Duke Frog in the standby phase, then yes, Super Poly can just destroy them, but if they don't, then you might struggle, so you need to be able to stop their plays a little bit more in order to be able to come back. For the spells, we play three copies of Preda Practice. This card is absolutely amazing. You summon one from the hand and then you search another Preda one from your deck with a different name. This card is incredible. Being able to summon Scorpio with this card and then search the discard outlet, which is going to be Biblis 99% of the time, means that sometimes you can use Scorpio's effect without opening a monster in your opening hand because of this card. Because the search happens before Scorpio's effect activates, so this is why this card works like that and it's really amazing. We play three copies of Brand Fusion. Nothing to explain about this card. It's absolutely amazing. Even though people have stopped playing the deck, this card is still a powerhouse on its own. Being able to search this card with not only Alubur but with Cobra means that it's very, very consistent and you can get access to it most of the times. We play three copies of Branded Opening. I mentioned again that Alubur is just a one-off in the deck, but this card right here is really, really good, especially if you open with Biblisp. If you open this card and you discard Biblisp, then that's basically FTK because you can search any monster you want and then get a Branded Fusion. So that means that your Cobra doesn't have to search Branded Fusion. So you can either search Instant Fusion to extend more or search Super Poly if you know that it's going to be a deciding factor in the matchup, especially against Tier Elements, and then basically seal the game this way. Speaking of Super Poly, we do play three. I feel like this is one of the biggest advantages of this deck just because it can search this card. This card being searchable with Cobra makes the tier lament matchups so so free. All the tier lament matchups I faced that were more of a pure version like of the danger version then that's when this card bodied them. The two tier lament matchups that I lost to they were both punk tier laments and this deck is much more explosive because it doesn't only set up fusion monsters and stuff it sets up cards like Baron, Abyss Dweller and Apollosa that's when these matchups can kind of get out of hand but against the more standard tier lament decks being able to search this card means that you're going to have a free ride against them. We play three copies of Dark Ruler No More. I think this is pretty standard. It was pretty standard for a lot of lists in the event, like a lot of people were maining it. This card is just so good against Sprite, and then when you activate this against Sprite, the only thing you have to worry about is hand traps, or maybe even Smashers, if they searched it. But if they search Smashers, then sometimes they will not have enough of a follow-up if they don't search another starter. So if you still manage to break their board, then that means that you're going to win the game because they will not be able to do much against one of your interruptions. But yeah, this card, I think this format, it's a mandatory card in the main deck. It's much better than Droplet, because Droplet, even though it technically does the same thing,
thing. The problem is that you're going to have to play around at least one hand drop when you're playing against Sprite. And when you discard cards for Droplet to negate stuff your opponent has on the board, you maybe you will not have enough resources to play around the hand drops as well. So this is why this card is much better than Droplet in this format. We play three copies of Talent. So this is another really, really good card, not just because of Sprites playing so many hand drops, but against a lot of other decks, being able to take control of your opponent's monsters when they interrupt you is really, really good. Drawing two cards, especially in a deck like this, where you have so many powerhouse cards like Branded Fusion, Branded Opening, Breda Practice, you need to see these cards as consistently as possible in order to make the best boards and break the most broken boards. We play one copy of Instant Fusion. Similar to Tier Laments, this deck does have a level 5 fusion monster that is basically full combo. They summon Kit Kalos and we summon Ambulomelidus and we get all of our stuff. So yeah, this card, if you already have the combo pieces you need, you can also summon Millennium Mind Restrict, which will help you play on a lot of hand traps, especially Ash Blossom because this is a branded deck, so getting asked on your branded fusion still hurts a lot. We're playing one copy of Call by the Grave. This card is not here mainly to hit hand drops. This card is so broken that it has a lot of applications even when your opponent doesn't play any hand drops in the deck. Against Tier Laments, they're going to mean a lot of cards are going to activate in the grave to fuse, so you can hit those cards as well. You can hit Toad against Sprite, you can hit hand drops of course. Yeah, this card is just too good not to play. And for the traps, we play one copy of Preda Planning. This is the win button against Sprite. You send uh, you send a Preda Plan from the deck to the grave as cost, so this card is not ashable. And then you put uh, all monsters on the field, a Preda Counter on them, and any monster that has a Preda Counter becomes level one. And every person who knows how, sp how sprites play knows how devastating this effect is. Being able to make all of your opponent's board level one monsters means that they're not going to be able to summon gigantic sprite, means that they are not going to be able to summon sprite elf. You're going to stop their plays on the track. Also, this card is the main deck out to Mystic Mine, which is something that Brandy Despia doesn't have, and this is why. Not another reason why I feel like this deck is much, much better than Brandy Despia in this format is because this card plays out on the Mystic Mine. When you fusion summon a monster, you can banish this card from the grave to pop a card on the field. So yeah, being able to search this card, put it in the grave after using it, and then use something like a Banishment, a Super Poly, a Branded Fusion, anything at all, the Clamido Sanju, you banish this, you pop Mystic Mine, and then you just OTK your opponent. So Mystic Mine, unless they're using the Beat Cop strategy, then they're not going to be able to play around this card. So yeah, this card is really, really amazing. And the last card in the main deck is the one copy of Branded Banishment. You don't play Branded in red in this deck. You could if you wanted to play Chimera, but I feel like Chimera is not a card that you can consistently make in this particular version. So this card is much, much better. And this card against Steel Elements is really, really strong. Being able to banish their monsters, something like a Kikalo, some of the other monsters to make a Dragostapelli of your own while reviving something like a Mirror Jade, this card gives you so much advantage in this matchup. For the extra deck, we play one copy of Ambulomelis. You only need to play one copy of this card because either A, you're going to put it back in the deck with Lubelion, or B, you are not going to need it again because the moment you use your combo once, you're going to basically keep grinding with branded stuff. The Predaplan cards are maybe for a turn one play, and then when you can summon another Scorpio, you can either go into a Venom or another Dragostapelia. But the Predaplans are not the grindy part of the deck. The branded engine is the one that grinds you the games, and this is why you only need one copy of this card. But yeah, this card is amazing. On summon, it searches your Predaplan card, and then on you can tribute a monster, not as cost, it's just targets, so your opponent cannot even use this to bait any other effects so that you lose the monster. No, if they negate this, you are still going to have this monster on the field to fuse for a Dragostapelia, and by tributing one of your monsters, you can summon a Predaplan from the deck. So usually you're going to be summoning your Cobra to search for a branded fusion or super poly, whatever you need, but if you have drawn the Cobra, you can summon a Clam from the deck and then basically fuse away. We play two copies of Dragostapelia. This is an amazing interruption because, again, not only does it negate a card, but it also makes it level one. So against Sprite, you can basically not only negate like the Diva or the Nimble Beaver, but you also make it level one, so they're not going to be able to special summon any of the sprites in their hand, and if they don't have a starter, they're basically screwed. We play one copy of the Bellion. You only need one copy because this card shuffles itself back into the deck, but again, even if this card gets negated, it doesn't matter because Despia is the one deck that needs to be able to grind all those turns, but this deck can basically win like two turns max, so this is why you don't need to play more than one copy of this. We play two copies of Albion. The second one is for Mirror Jade's effect. The first one is to send Snow from deck to grave because, yeah, this card gives you the follow-up. It sets your branded banishment for an extra interruption during turn one. It searches your branded fusion if you want to follow-up, if you already have enough interruptions. Amazing card. We play two copies of Mirror Jade. The deck has fallen out of the format, branded Despia, but people have forgotten how scary this card is. Not only the effect to banish one of your opponent's monsters, not only giving you follow-up, but also their Aigeki effect during the end phase is something that a lot of people are going to get caught off guard because they just don't have a way to play around it. They just have to play into it so they lose their entire board or they're forced to make like a sketchy line, like summoning a Mascarena and then Lingy to get away for a Sprite Elf in order to make that Sprite Elf indestructible. That's the only way Sprites can play around this card if they don't negate it with Toad, but sometimes they just don't have enough resources to first summon Toad and then 
beater of this card. One of the big problems for Sprite is that it has it's lacking the power to deal with a lot of beaters. And this deck, that's the game of the deck. It summons a lot of beaters. So this is why this card in particular is so, so hard to deal when you're playing Sprite. You play one copy of Titanic Lad. This card is here mainly when you get Nibiru, but I didn't get Nibiru the entire tournament. I should have guessed because Nibiru is such a terrible card against Sprite. Some people were citing it. I guess nobody cited against me or never even drew it against me. But when you get Nibiru, you send this with Mirror Jade and then basically you summon an Albus during the end phase and then you use Albus effect to fuse with Nibiru and then you just summon an Albion and get another Mirror Jade. So this is why this card is here. It never came up, but when you get nibbed, it does come up. For the Super Poly targets, we play one copy of Starving Venom. This card is the only monster you can summon very, very consistently, even without Super Poly. And the thing is, I summoned this card a lot without Super Poly. Being able to have the pseudo follow up with Preda Plants by summoning a Scorpio and then going into your clam from the deck, get this card in the field is really amazing. It can copy a lot of good effects this format because of tier laments and also blow up the board as well as the, the same thing as Mirror Jade when it gets destroyed. So yeah, it's a really, really good card. We play one copy of Garura. This card here is the reason Super Poly is worth main decking because this card makes it so that Super Poly is basically usable against 99% of the decks in the game. Unless you're playing something it's like Sky Striker or Eldritch, you're going to be able to resolve Super Poly very, very consistently because of this card. A lot of people are playing it in tier laments because it's a free monster to summon that gives you access to Curious, but for this deck, it's just a Super Poly target. We play one copy of Mud Dragon, another Super Poly target that can sometimes come up. It didn't come up, but there will be a lot of scenarios where this card might give you a game if you open Super We play one copy of Earth Golem Attic Nister. I was expecting to face at least one Mothmech deck. I didn't, but if I did, then this card would come up. I played one copy of Panzer Dragon. This card is here to basically play around those decks that try to summon Calamity on your turn. When they're playing Punk or when I'm playing Punk Therion, you can fuse away their Needle Fiber with the Hot Red, or you can fuse away the Regulus with the Hot Red. This card needs an Earth, or no, this card needs a Machine and a Dragon in order to be able to fuse, so you can fuse Super Polo with them. It didn't come up, but again, it's a card that can basically guarantee you some games that you would have lost otherwise. And the extra deck space is not tight at all, so you can afford to play cards like this. Also, you can summon this card with Instant Fusion, and then it blows up during the end phase because of Instant Fusion, and when it's destroyed, you can target a card in the field and destroy it, so this card can act as an out to Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, which a lot of people were citing, and the deck can sometimes struggle a lot against that card. And the last card in the extra deck is the one copy of the Millennium Eyes. If you open Instant Fusion and you know that you have enough combo pieces to combo off, but you need to play around a lot of hand traps, then you can summon this card to make your plays more resilient. Moving on to the side deck, we play one copy of Panker Tops. This card here is the insurance against Sprite. So I mentioned that Sprite players, some were playing around Super Poly and some were not. So the thing is, when they see that you're playing a deck that plays Super Poly, because when you see Predator Plants, you basically assume they're running Super Poly, even if you don't see it game one. So you're not going to summon Dupe Frog from the deck during game two and three. So this is why Panker Tops and another card I play, I'll show you right after, are really, really good against that situation because you summon Panker Tops, you run over Toad, and during the battle phase still, you tribute it to pop the Elf as well. The Elf, Sprite Elf, is during the main phase. So with one card, you basically destroy their entire setup. So when they don't summon Dupe Frog, this is what happens with the side deck. And if they do summon Dupe Frog, then they just fall into Super Poly regardless. So it's not like they can play around one thing and dodge the other. No, they just have to guess which one you have or and a lot of people are not expecting this card or the next card which I played and I'm really glad I did it's Alpha the Master of Beasts I really love this card this card is absolutely amazing it does the same thing that Panker Tops does but the thing is this card is bigger than Panker Tops and against Tier Laments it's very important because when they summon Winda and they have the field spell on the field it's a 2700 so Panker Tops cannot deal with that Winda but Alpha can you can just special the Alpha run over the Winda and then use Alpha's effect to bounce another card you bounce this to your hand you can summon it again or keep it for a discard outlet for Scorpio or branded opening because you're not going to need it again if you break your opponent's board. Yeah, this card is better than Panker Tops in my opinion because of the 2700 window that people can make in tier laments. And yeah, this card also in super grind games, it wins you the game automatically. I did play one matchup against Adventure Sprite, which we basically went like to top decking. We didn't have anything else and anything less in our extra deck. I top decked this card and then I basically won from there. I'm playing two copies of DD Crow because of tier laments, being able to banish the monster that's activating in the graveyard means that they're not going to be able to fuse at all. Against Sprite, you can banish the Ronin Totem, so you're going not going to have to deal with Toad. It's a really good card this format. I'm playing two copies of Ghost Ogre because of Gigantic Sprite. This card against Gigantic Sprite, it has to detach a material from an Xyz monster on their field and not for cost. So if you get rid of their monster and if they don't have another Xyz, which most of the time they're not going to unless they open the Absolute Nuts, then, then you're not going to have to deal with the Swap Rock from the deck, but you're also getting rid of the Gigantic Sprite. Also against some other matchups, against Adventure Packages, this card can be really good. Even against Flanderies, you can basically pop their field spell 
well to make sure that they don't have too many of their chain blocks so they can play around other stuff as well. I'm playing one copy of Harpy's Feather Duster because we all know that in tournaments like this there are always people that do play some type of background deck and we did see it with Altergeist Mystic Mind so you need to be able to be prepared for decks like this because if you're not they're going to catch you off guard and you're going to automatically lose. We're playing three copies of Evenly Match. This card is an auto win button against a lot of matchups. Against two elements you can use this and they're most of the time they're going to be forced to keep a wind on the field and if they just keep wind out that's very very easy to get rid of because you have all these cards that can get you a monster bigger than a window by just activating one card one branded fusion even though it's not going to give you a mirror jade it's going to get you your snow in the grave summon your albion run over window piper drops and alpha they can still do the same thing so if they just have the wind on the field you can basically make sure that you're going to be able to win also another thing that makes it this card so good is that even though you are not going to, to get rid of their window if they keep their window they're either going to deal with it them themselves so be able to combo off or they're just going to special summon once during the next turn and the thing about this is that if you search super poly and they only summon once during the next turn because they want to keep their window on the field that's when you keep your super poly for the end phase or your own turn then you get rid of the window and then you can push back again so when you're using this card against tier elements they have to be very very careful of how exactly they played because if they keep the right cards or if they keep their own cards or how they play the next turn then they can basically die in one single turn i'm playing one copy of red reboot again the same thing as evenly and harpy's feather duster you need to be able to be prepared for decks like this and this deck can OTK very very easily so you don't really care that your opponent is going to set another card you're just going to destroy them in a single turn and the last card in the side deck is three copies of debarrier this is mainly for tier laments but you can also use it in theory against sprite it's not the greatest against sprite but i guess you can call exceeds and they will not be able to use gigantic sprite or toad or stuff like that but it's mainly for tier laments because you do have fusions as well but it doesn't matter too much because you're going to have your beaters on the field and if you change this to a tier element graveyard effect they are not going to be able to get their monsters on the board so the best they can do is like summer rank 4 like a redoer or a dweller or something like that or maybe go for a curious to set up a snow so they can make some sort of interruptions but that's again not the scariest thing to deal with when you're playing a deck like this so yep that's the deck guys i hope you enjoyed it this deck did really really well I, again my end score was 831 i could have done a little bit better i think in some scenarios but again it was enough to get me to the top 128 so if you're not a fan of the meta of the current meta because i know that a lot of people are not then give this deck a try you'll be surprised a lot this deck is really really good against the current top two decks it can snatch some games very very easily with the tools this deck has to counter those certain two matchups tier elements and sprite so yeah again if you're frustrated with the meta and you think like it's unfair or something but you still want to play and you don't want to play one of the top two decks then this deck might be the deck for you it's going to do really really well so again thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our upcoming content and we'll see you next time